texture is the relative composition of sand, silt and clay of the mineral part in a soil. So with sand being the coarsest part of the soil texture classes, you can usually see it um, in your soil sample or you can feel it with your hands. Silt is the middle class and clay is the smallest particle size. Soil texture is very important uh, or it's a very important soil characteristic to know as it influences other soil properties such as water retention, water holding capacity, nutrient retention or the erodibility of the soil. Unfortunately, soil texture is something that you cannot correct or change in your soil. However, it's still very important to know what kind of soil texture you have because you know you need to know what you what you're working with. Okay, to do your soil texture test, you take a bit of soil sample with a trowel or with your hands, that's absolutely fine. But this soil is so, so dense, I can almost not get my fingers in to get enough soil out of it. So get enough for your hands. Make sure that you take out any roots that sometimes is a bit difficult. If you have a highly organic soil as this appears, it's often difficult to do that. But we can still do this, this soil test, this texture test with your hands. So the first thing you do, you try and make a ball out of it in your hands. If this is quite difficult, it's good to have a bit of water and to just wet your soil sample a little bit. So this is the first step that shows us if you can make form a ball, there are other components than sand in there. So it's sand and at least silt and clay. If it would be just sand, you would be unable to roll the ball. The next test is to find out how much silt and clay are in the soil sample. To do this, you need to form a ribbon. It's called something that's called a ribbon test. So they're like ribbon charts. So you try to form a ribbon with your soil sample. And depending on how long this ribbon is, you can find out if it's a more silty soil or if it's a more a clay soil. So I will add a little bit of water to this just to make it more workable. And then if it's about, if it forms a ribbon that's between 2.5 and 5 centimeters. It's usually a silty soil. If it can form a ribbon that's longer than 5 centimeters, then it's a clay soil. So what you do is you try and make a ribbon and try and push this ribbon with your thumb and your forefinger over, over your index finger. And then depending when this ribbon breaks up, so this is approximately five centimeters before it breaks up properly and can't support himself. So we know that this soil is quite clay, which we can confirm. We can see that it's really clay, it's really condensed. You can feel it. I also feel a little bit of sand and it also feels very soapy and flowery. So I think this would be sandy silt clay because we can form a very long ribbon, which is good. Soil structure is the way that those soil particles, the sand, silt and clay particles form together as a shape. So it means you can have different soil structures such as very fine and loose soil structure or angular sub, um, soil structure and then really poorly soil structure such as platy soil structure it looks like uh, literally like plates stacked on top, uh, on top of each other or a massive soil structure which then usually hold, is giving us um, information that the soil is quite waterlocked and dense and compacted. Soil structure is a soil property that you can 
change to a degree. So if you have a very compacted soil, you can sometimes plough it. But then in Scotland, you have often waterlogged soils or very stony soils. So you need to see what is in the ground. You need to do your soil pit and see what you can do. So often ploughing is not the first option to go with. But then you can look into other options such as drainage, clearing the ditches. That sometimes even helps with waterlogging and soil structure as well. But you can also look into changing your management style in, in general. So if you have a very heavy livestock on it, for example, or very heavy machinery, you can maybe change that as well. There is a perfectly great soil structure for agricultural soils. You want to have a loose soil structure. You want something where roots can penetrate. You want something where a lot of air goes into the soil. It's very important that your roots have air. What to take from this is work with the soils you've got. Know the soils that you have in your field and gather as much information as you can. Not only in the soil um, pit itself, just look around you and see what do I have? Do I live close to the shore? Do I live um, up in the mountain hills where I know I have a very rocky, um, rocky soil maybe so I couldn't get any machinery in. So how can I change this with um, different management styles? For the last three years there has been uh, heavy livestock on here in the form of horses and they have compacted and poached the ground quite considerably to the point that really anything short of we feel uh, cultivating it is going to actually rectify that. The whole the whole purpose of having the field was to put some sheep on it. Uh, it's only getting managed as conservation grazing just now because of the type of lease that we have we, we don't really want to do too much with it just now but um, there is a possibility of having it for longer in the future and we're currently making considerations about how we would improve this ground. The other thing that we've noticed in this field as well is all the drains. Um, there are, right the way through the field there are certain uh, open V drains that are there, they're all clogged uh, and they all require cleaning out. The difficulty with that is, again, getting a digger in here at the moment, it would sink up to the axles before it even got to the drains closest to us. So we're going to probably have to do that by hand, um, but it will, we would see an improvement with that, I think, um, if, if we undertake that task. So what we see here is our soil profile. We dug down to bedrock and I, I'm advising you to dig to bedrock as much as far as you can because that will give you a whole picture of the soil that you have available. So we can see here that the upper bits are very compacted glade pot salts. So we can say see that all the plant roots are making it all the way down here with great great effort and we ha do not have a lot of air channels in here we do not have a lot of um, invertebrates or biological activity at the moment as this soil is so compacted and so dense however we also see when we dig further down so this this soil pit is um, 45 uh, centimeters deep until we hit the bedrock and we can see that it just at 40 centimeters the compaction eases off and then we come to a very nice light soil so we can see here the soil texture has changed this is really fluffy very light airy soil the plant roots came down here we can see it has a highly organic dark color it's sandy it's a sandy silt loam which is fantastic and up, up here, we have this compaction layer of clay that has built up. But if we can ail that and say, okay, we change our livestock management to what Rob was saying, to lighter animals and to conservation grazing, we can then hope that we can work against this compaction layer again and get everything tight, um, a bit looser again. Once the ditches are cleared up, Maybe there's even a possibility to get plowing going, but that's something we need to look at later down the line. Now let's have a look at our soil structure. So again, the soil structure is the composition our silt, sand and clay are forming, aggregates are forming together in the soil to help our roots to grow. Um, so you can already have a look at the soil structure while you are digging the soil pit. Just by make sure Again, make sure when you dig your soil pit to 
leave the grass intact and to have big chunks that you can fill up your soil pit later to save livestock um, injuries and yourself as well. And why you do that, you can already see here that we have really a very massive, um, massive compacted soil that is not breaking apart. Like if you pick it up, it's really heavy. It's very compacted. It is a bit stony and you can almost not get your fingers into the soil. So this would be described as a massive soil structure. These are the areas that are further down. So after the first 10 centimeters, you still see that the roots are pushing through, which is fantastic because they know the good soil is down there. So they're making their way through it. And you have signs of modeling again, but we do have a very compacted, massive structure. It's not platy, it's not subangular, it is really massive. Wow, what a difference. We were just digging the next soil profile in this field that is just adjacent to the grassland area we were in before. And again, we can see from being in the field that the grassland already looks much greener and drier than any other soil uh, in, in the other field. And digging up the soil profile, we can see already that the sand, the, the soil is much sandier and much drier than the other soil. We find earthworms immediately we were digging in. So we have a highly uh, high organic uh, biological activity, which is fantastic. We have lots of air pockets for our roots to grow. We have a lot of um, porous soil for our roots to grow down. And let's see if we can make the ribbon test again. So this time we're pushing it again into, in between our thumb and index finger and this one is breaking easier so it's a very short ribbon just under under 2.5 centimeters so it's a quite sandy sandy soil this time so i would say it's the sandy sandy silt loam which is fantastic because it gives us a lot of every texture class so it gives us um, as i said before a lot of pore space for um, biological activity for the air pockets um, for nutrients to circulate, for fungi to grow, for basically everything. It's really, really good. So the process to turn a derelict land to a productive land would be, first of all, take your spade, go out in the field, dig your soil profile and get your hands dirty and see what your soil texture and soil structure are. That gives you a lot of information about the soil type you have, how deep the soil is, how workable it is, if there are any compaction zones you need to think of. So then second step would be do a soil test, send um, some soil away to the soil labs and get it tested, see what the nutrient levels are, what the pH is. Um, if you want to be very precise, there are even uh, possibilities to do a part particle anal analysis to see exactly what soil texture you have, apart from the hand test. So this is all possible. That would be step number two. Then check your drainage of the field. It's always important to clear out the ditches and see what kind of drainage you have or if you can improve it in any other way. And the fourth step would be to after you received all this, this information, think about what management you want to do and what the land is actually supporting. So see the soil that you have and fit it to the business idea that you have rather than starting with a business idea and then making the land support it, although it might not be capable of doing that. <laughs> 